We continue now at the top of Daf Yutes Samad Aleph and Maseches Kiddushin. This is Kiddushin Daf 19a. On the previous summit, the Gemara had asked whether Yud is considered to be like a Kiddushin or like an Isuin. And the Gemara is now in the middle of bringing a proof from a Brisa. The Brisa is discussing a situation where a father sells his daughter to be a Shifcha, but she's already an Almona, and he's selling her to a Kohen Gadol, and the Brisa says it's fine to sell her as an Almona to a, to a Kohen Gadol. Now, even though there's a potential of Yud any time you sell your daughter as a Shifcha, Anytime you sell your daughter as an Amma Hevriya, there's a possibility that the master will marry the, the Amma Hevriya. But it's not a problem by an Almona to a Kohen Gadol because we say that's just a lav. You could still have Kiddushin by an Almona to a Kohen Gadol. And so the Gemara said, how is it that she's an Almona? How is it that the father is selling his daughter as a Shifcha, as an Amma Hevriya, to this Kohen Gadol? But she's an Almona. And what kind of an, an, an Almona is she? And so the Gemara says it, it can't be that the father actually married her off, gave her away to Kiddushin, because in such a situation, if it's a regular Kiddushin, the halach is you can't sell her as a Shifcha after Kiddushin. And so the Gemara had suggested, well, maybe we're talking about Yud. And if we're talking about Yud, so if you're going to say Yud is going to be Nisuin, that would be a problem, because again, the father would have no Rishus over her if she had a Nisuin. But if you're going to say that Yud is a Kiddushin, and if you're going to follow the opinion, you're going to say not like Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Huda says the original money of the sale when you sell her as an Amo Evriya, that is Likidushin. But if you're going to say not like Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Huda, if you're going to say that the original money when the father sells the daughter to be an Amo Evriya, it's not that original money he receives that's the money for the Kiddushin, but rather it's the fact that she is not, she's no longer going to be an Evid, so therefore she's receiving essentially the fact that she no longer has to serve the master. That's really her Kiddushin. So already that's a different kind of a Kiddushin. That's not the same Kiddushin as the one that comes from the father. And that kind of Kiddushin, if it's coming from her Avdus, that you have the Kiddushin, if it's coming through Yud, then you could say he is allowed to sell her as a Shifcha after that kind of Kiddushin, and that's how we can understand the Brisa, and that would also prove that Yud is just an Erisin. And so the Gemara had asked, well, if you're already saying that the Kiddushin of Yud is different than a standard Kiddushin, well, why can't you just say it's a Nisuin? Maybe Yud is a Nisuin, and the Nisuin of Yud is different than a standard Nisuin. And the Gemara now says, you just simply can't say that Mishani. You can't really say one Nisuin is different from the other, so it has to be that Yud is Erisin Rash. He says, Mishani, Kevin de Nisuin do Raisa Ninu. If Nisuin is something that's do Raisa, Nafka Legamri Merishuse. So we know that she's totally leaving his Rishus. There's no control of the father. It doesn't matter how the Nisuin happens. Happens. It doesn't matter if the Nisuin would happen if, let's say, it happened through Yud, and if Yud was Nisuin, and it happened in a fundamentally different way than when the father gives her away for Nisuin, it still wouldn't matter. At the end of the day, Nisuin is going to be Nisuin, and so you cannot interpret it that way, because if it would be considered a Nisuin, there's no way the father could later sell her as a Shifcha, as an Amo Evriya, because she's already outside of his Rishus. So again, you see what we must be talking about is we're talking about a situation of Yud, and the Erisin that exists by Yud is different than a standard Erisin, and that's why the father is able to sell her as an Ammo Evri, and that's what the Brisa means, that if she's an Almona, the father can sell her as a Shifcha later on to a Kohen Gadol. And the Gemara continues now and just clarifies the Brisa according to the other opinion within Rav Yossi Rav Yehuda. According to Rav Nachman Rav Yitzchak, he says that even Rav Yossi Rav Yehuda says that Mos Harishonos Lekidushin Nitnu, that that original money when a father sells his daughter as an Ammo Hevriya, it is that original money that is the Kiddushin. And in that case, the Kiddushin of Yud is identical to a regular Kiddushin, so you can't give this answer. Because again, as we said, once she already has Kiddushin, so he can't sell her as a how do we even interpret the Brisa? And the Gemara says to that, according to Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak's, Bar Yitzchak's understanding of Rabbi Yossi Rav Yehuda, and we're going to discuss that understanding of Rabbi Yossi Rav Yehuda further on, but according to that, my Mukim La, how is he going to understand the Brisa? And the answer to that is Mukim La, Rabbi Eliezer. He's going to have to say that the Brisa follows Rabbi Eliezer's opinion. Rabbi Eliezer says, there's only a problem of selling her as a shifcha after she was a shifcha. But you can sell her as a shifcha after she was married. That's actually not a problem, according to Rabbi Eliezer, and that would be a simple interpretation of the b'raisa. And Rashi explains, according to Rav Nachman, who says later on, that even according to Rav Yosi, Rav Yehuda, with that original money that the father receives when he sells her as an Ammo Evriya, it's that money that is actually the money for the Kiddushin, the Kiddushin Da'avninu, meaning that's a regular case when you have Yud, it's a regular case of Kiddushin that comes through the father. So how is he going to understand the price of Afilu Eris and Osa Hechi Hadr Mazvin? Again, even if you're going to say that Yud creates Erison, but isn't there a problem of Shifchus after Erison? 
And the Gemara says to that, Muki look, Rabbi Eliezer Garcia, and he can say that this Braisa follows Rabbi Eliezer's opinion as opposed to Rabbi Akiva on the previous Amr. The Amr le Shivchos Achar Shivchos. Rabbi Eliezer says only Shivchos after Shivchos is a problem. The Kadarish Kevin Shabogad Ba, again, that's the Drusha on the previous Amr. He darshans that once he acts deceitfully with her, meaning once he's already sold her as a Shivcha once, he's not allowed to sell her as a Shivcha again. That's how he understands the Pasuk. Vyad Hashtam Hadrinan Lukma de Loka Rabbi Eliezer, Misham de Shamutahi. Now, Rashi. She explains why did we not say like why didn't we say the bride of Fowls Rabbi Eliezer all along? We didn't want to say the bride of Fowls Rabbi Eliezer because Rabbi Eliezer is Shamuti. Rabbi Eliezer again, we generally do not hold like Rabbi Eliezer, so therefore we didn't want to say the bride was like Rabbi Eliezer. But the Gemara is just saying, according to Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak's understanding of Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Yehuda, you have to say that the bride is following Rabbi Eliezer. And the Gemara continues, Boy, Reish Lakish, Reish Lakish asked the following question, The halach of Yid is not only can the master marry the Yom Ha'evriya, but he can also marry her off to his son. He is, is he allowed to marry her off to his son who is a minor? Beno Amar Achmona, Beno Kaldu. The Pasuk says, Beno to his son. You could say it means any kind of son, even if he's a minor. Odilma, or maybe, Beno Dumya Dide, maybe the son has to be similar to him. Mahu Gadol, just like the father is an adult. Af Beno Gadol. So too the son has to be an adult. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rabbi Zeir, Rabbi Zeir says, Toshma, come and hear the following proof. Ish prat le katan, the Pasuk says, Ish a man that excludes a katan. This is a Pasuk discussing adultery. Asher yinafes eishas ish, and again, that's adultery with the wife of an ish, the wife of a man, prat le eishas katan, that excludes the wife of a katan. And so the Gemara says, V'yamrit miyayid. Now, if you're going to say it's possible to do yid with the son who's a katan, imkein motzinu ishas le katan, then we do find that there's such a thing as marriage when it comes to a katan. So why would we exclude Aisha's cotton? Why would we exclude such a case if you have a situation of a husband and wife where the husband is a cotton in a case of Yud? But the Gemara still says, what do you mean? You could say the exact opposite. V'yelamai, rather, what are you going to say? You're going to say, ain't no miyayin. You're going to say there is no yid for a katan. But if there's no yid for a katan and there's no situations of marriage for a katan, so I might come in my atle kra. Why is the Pasuk excluding and saying that you don't have adultery by an ashes katan if there's no such thing even as an ashes katan? So maybe we should say the opposite. Tif should mean not to miyayin. Maybe we should conclude the opposite, that really there, there is yid for beno katan. There is yid, and therefore you do have a situation of ishes for a katan. And just the Pasuk is saying that there's no issue of adultery in that situation. We're excluding including the Aisha's katan from the halachas that are related to Neof, that are related to adultery. But the Gemara says not necessarily. Amar Ravashi, Ravashi says there is another situation where you can have Aisha's katan, and so therefore you could interpret that the Pasuk is excluding Aisha's katan in the following situation. Hacha b'yavam ben teisha shanam v'yomecha. The case over here is by a yavam, meaning to say you have a situation of yibam. And so the brother-in-law who's doing the yibam, he's nine years old in a day. Habal yavemto and his relations with his yavama. Askinon, that's the case over here. Demido raisa chazile. There you have a situation. It's going to be a marriage, essentially essentially on a Doraisa level. And the Gemara continues, according to that, Mahu de Tema, what might you have said? Kevan de Doraisa Chazile Uviyaso Bia, since on a Doraisa level, so this marriage is going to be effective and his act of relations is going to be considered an act of relations, so you might think that's a full Ishus. So therefore, you might think, Habo Alem Ish. If somebody then has relations with her, that would be a Chi of Aveshas Ish. Kamash Valan. And so therefore, that's what the Pasuk is telling us, that it's, it's, it's excluded from the Halachas of Neof, from the Halachas of adultery. And Rashi explains, What do we mean, Meaning to say, there's a bond over here, it's an automatic bond of Yibam, between the brother-in-law and the sister-in-law. There's a Kenyan in terms of inheriting her. Like we say, if a nine-year-old has the act of relations with the Yavama, that's considered to be a Kenyan. So again, that could be the case that the Pasuk is excluding. And the Gemara continues, So what is the conclusion? What's the answer? to our question, meaning in terms of the issue of whether there could be yud for a katan or not, is there yud for a katan? And the Gemara says, Tashma, come and hear the following proof, Amar Rabbi Aivo, Amar Rabbi Yanai, ain't yud ela begadol. Rabbi Aivo says, the Rabbi Yanai says, there's no yud except for a gadol, has to be an adult, and ain't yud ela midas, there's only going to be yud if there's das, if the individual has das. And the Gemara says, Tarti, why do you have to say both of these things? That's identical. If you're saying that the that the person doing the yud, the man doing the yud has to be an adult, so of course you're saying that he has to have das. 
And so the first answer the Gemara gives is Matam Ko'amar. What he's saying is he's giving the reason why it has to be a Gadol. Matam ain't Yud Ela Begadol. What's the reason that Yud has to be with an adult? Lefisha ain't Yud Ela Midas. Because Yud has to be Midas. You have to have Das. Only a Gadol has Das. Viboy same, if you want, I could say another answer. My Midas. What does it mean over here that Yud has to be Midas? We're not talking about the Das of the man. Midas Dido. It actually has to be from her Das. It sounds like it's saying, this is a discussion in the Rishonim, but it sounds like it's saying that she has to consent to the Yud. The Tani Abaye Bereder Rabbi Avo, because Abaye, the son of Rabbi Avo, taught, Asher lo Ye'oda Malamit Shet Sarech It says Asher lo Ye'oda, that shows that he needs to arrange it with her. Essentially, he needs to inform her about it. And the Gemara says, Hu Tani Lo Hu Amar Lo, he taught it, and he said it as follows, Bikidushe Yiyud Ve'al Ibud Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda. We're talking, about, we're talking here about Kiddusha Yud, and we're following the opinion of Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yehuda, to Amar Mo Sarishonos Lav Le Kiddusha Nintin, who says that the original money isn't being given for the Kiddusha, meaning to say, why is it that we say that she needs to consent in order for the year to be effective? So if we would have said that the original money that's given to the father, that is the Kiddushin. When she's originally sold as an Amo Ivriya, that money is the Kiddushin. So then it's running through the father, the Kiddushin, and actually you would not have to inform her. You would not need her consent for the Kiddushin. And that's why we're saying, when we're saying over here that you need to have her consent for the Kiddushin, it's following Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, that the original money is not Kiddushin. Meaning really she's the one that is accepting the Kiddushin in the form of the fact that she she no longer has to be an Evid, and therefore if the Kiddushin is running through her, it needs her consent. And the Gemara continues, Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak Gamar, Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak says, Afilu teimel the Kiddushin no, you don't have to say that. You could even say that that money that's originally given to the father is the money of the Kiddushin, and the Kiddushin is essentially running through the father. So why is it that we need her consent? Shani hocha damar achmona yada, because it's different over here. The Pasuk says the word yada, and therefore that does imply that nevertheless, even though the Kiddushin, that money is going through the father, it's the original money that's given for the sale, uh, the, for, her, for the sale of her as an Ammo Ivriya, but still the Pasuk essentially indicates that the Yid needs her consent. And the Gemara continues, My Reb Yosib Reb Yehuda. What is this, this Reb Yosib Reb Yehuda that we keep mentioning? Again, we keep saying that Reb Yosib Reb Yehuda holds that the original money is not for Kiddushin, and Rav Nachmar Yitzchak, we said earlier, says within Reb Yosib Reb Yehuda that the money is for Kiddushin, and that's the following Brisa. The Tanya, as we learned in a Brisa, Yehuda Vehefta, it says in the Pasuk, it says, Imro'a be'ine aduna asher lo yo'ada vehefda. So tzarech shi he shows biyom k'day pediyah. So the Brisa says that we understand from here, what does it mean yo'ada vehefda? It means that in order to do yo, there has to be enough time left of her servitude that it's worth a pruta, that if she no longer has to serve it, she's receiving a pruta, and that is the kiddushin. Mikan am Rabbi Yosib Rabbi Yehuda. From here, Rabbi Yosib Rabbi Yehuda says, Im ye shows biyom k'day lasos imo shava pruta. If there's enough time left in the day, this is the last day of her being an Amo Hevriya, that she can do a Pruta's worth of work, Mikudeshes, then that's a Kiddushin. Because the Padilla, the redemption, so to speak, there's enough value in theory to redeem her, and you're using that value for the Kiddushin, then it's a good Kiddushin. The Imla Avena Mikudeshes, and if not, it's, it's not a good Kiddushin. And you see that the Kiddushin is running through her, not the Father. Al Makasavar Moserishonus Lavla Kiddushin. You see from here that he holds that the original money is not for Kiddushin, but rather it's the fact that she no longer has to serve as an Evid. Again, the Kiddushin is running through her. And now the Gemara brings the same Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak we've been quoting all along. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, Amar Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak says, no, that's not what it means. Afilu temel kedushin, and you could even say that the kedushin, the original money that's given to the father, is for the kedushin purposes. It's not the fact that she's no longer an evid. That's not the kedushin that's being received. It's the original money when she was sold as an amuhayvria. But it's just again, it's a gezeira sakasiv that there has to be enough time of servitude of a shavat pruta shani hachad yomer achmona vehefta. It's different over here because the pasuk says vehefta talks about redemption, and so therefore it's just a gezeira sakasiv that there has to be enough time of service left that has the value of a shavat pruta. And Rashi explains Lekidushin Nitnu again. If you say that the original money given to the father when he sells her as an Amo Evriya, that is for the Kiddushin. The Nafkamina, Nafkamina is, as we said earlier, the Havale Macharas Bito Leishas, that then we're saying the Kiddushin goes through him. He's essentially selling his daughter for the purpose of marriage. Vim Yodan, so therefore, if there is Yod, Vinis Armel, and she becomes a widow, Shuv Ein Mochra. So now he can't sell her as a Shifcha because you're not allowed to sell her as a Shifcha after Yod, and that's specifically when the Yod or when the marriage is coming through him. As we said earlier, again, 
Shuvain Mochra Le Shifchus. He can't sell her as a Shifcha after she's already been after he's already sold her Leishus Le Rabbi Akiva. Again, that's according to the opinion of Rabbi Akiva that he's not allowed to sell her Le Shifchus after Ishus. And then the Gemara said Shani Hoch. It's different over here. Dechsev Lashon Yada Le Midrash Lashon Deya. Again, we're darshaning Yada as a language of Deya that there has to be Das. She has to be informed and consent. Yada Vehefta Vein Yida Le Bemakom Padia. That Rosh is saying that you can't have. You can't have the yud unless it's a situation where redemption is possible. Let's say he's trying to do the yud at the very end of the six years. There has to at least be enough time left in the day. That there's at least a pruta's value of service left had she continued to be an amo hevri at this time. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. Omar Rava, Omar Rav Nachman. Rava says that Rav Nachman says, Omer Adam Levito Katan, a person can say to his daughter who's a minor, Tsi'i kibla Kiddushech, you go out and receive your Kiddushin, meaning to say he's essentially appointing his daughter as his Shliach to accept the Kiddushin on his behalf. And so therefore, just like a father can marry off his daughter, in this case, that's essentially what's happening. She's physically receiving the Kiddushin as a Shliach on behalf of the father, that's fine. And how do we know that? We know that from Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Yehuda's halacha. Meaning to say, we're following the, the version of Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Yehuda that the Mo'os Harishonos, the original money that's given to the the original money that's given to the father when he sells her as an Amma Evriya is lav the Kiddushin, is not for Kiddushin. And what is the Kiddushin? Again, according to Rabbi Yossi Rav Yehuda, the Kiddushin is that she no longer serves as an Evid. That's effectively what she is receiving, and that becomes the money for Kiddushin. Lav Amma Rabbi Yossi Rav Yehuda, Mo'os Harishon Aslav the Kiddushin. Nidnu, didn't Rabbi Yossi Rav Yehuda say that that original money that's given to the father is not considered to be given for the purposes of Kiddushin? V'chimishayir bo shavipruta, and really, it's when he says to her, that you no longer have to do the work that remains. You're supposed to serve me. You no longer have to do that as long as that's worth a Shava Pruta. Have a Kiddushi. That is a good Kiddushin. And he's understanding, Rav Amar of Nachman is understanding that when she receives that payment, that value, so to speak, that she no longer has to serve as an Ammo Hevriya, she's essentially acting as an agent of the Father in that situation. And so Hachanami Loshna here also, it's no different. If she's going to receive the money as an agent of the Father, that's no different than she receives the value of the fact that she no longer has to be an Amo Evriya, and that's a good Kedushin. And the Gemara continues along the same lines, V'yomar Rav Amar of Nachman, and Rav said that Rav Nachman said, HaMekadesh b'milva shi'esho lehamashkon, let's say a person is Mekadesh, a woman with a loan, meaning to say that she owes him money, and he's essentially forgiving the loan, but he's not only forgiving the loan, he's now giving her back the mashkon, he's giving her back the collateral that he took for that loan, so in that case, Mekudesh, it's a good Kedushin. And that also we learn from Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda, Mid Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda, we learned that out from Rabbi Yossi Brav Yehuda's case. Again, that's a situation where he's telling her she no longer has to serve as an Amo Evriya, and that's the Kiddushin. Lav Hamar Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda, Mo, sorry, shown us Lav Kiddushin. Nitnu, didn't Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda say that the original money is not for Kiddushin, and therefore, Hai Halvohi, then essentially what this really is is a loan. In other words, when the master gives the money to the father, so the father now owes the master that was basically a loan, and how is the father paying back? Vihi Gufa Mashkoni. She herself is the collateral on that loan. Meaning when she serves as an Ammo Hevri, it's like he's taking the collateral of the loan, and that's how the loan is being paid off, and we, when he tells her she no longer needs to be an Ammo Hevri, he's essentially forgiving the loan and giving her the mashkon back, and that's considered to be a Kiddushin. So you see again, HaMekadosh B'milva Shiesh Olam Mashkon, that is a good Kiddushin. We will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Yotes Amud Beis.